Control and power in relationships um, can vary across the piece. I think it's really important for people to um, appreciate it's not always about physical violence. There's also emotional and psychological violence. There can be social violence where a partner excludes his partner from or isolates her from her friends or from her family. There might be verbal abuse that goes on. That's also a sign of family and domestic violence. There might be financial abuse, whereby he's controlling all the funds and finances and preventing her from being able to exercise her human rights. And then there's also sexual abuse, which also happens in domestic and family violence situations and can be a part of that pattern of what's actually happening. We see a lot of uh, really quite violent abuse that occurs online using apps stalking people through you know, social media or um, putting things on their phones so that you can track them. There are a range of different ways in which this sort of abuse occurs. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm a survivor of, of domestic violence and also a survivor of acquired brain injury. When I was 25 years old, just finished university and looking forward to what life had ahead of me, my stepfather attempted to kill me with a, a claw hammer. And the excuse that he used was that he thought we would all be, all be better off dead. He took it upon himself to decide that because my mum was going to leave him, he would kill us all and then himself. He was passive aggressive. Like, I could see he was getting irritated, but he wouldn't. He wouldn't show it, he would be very quiet, mostly stay on the computer or read his books and like you'd hear him puff and puff and go away, but he had only once hit my, my sister for having a tantrum. <laughs> you know, he, he was pretty, pretty quiet until I think, well, he said it was him, a, an attempt at familicide. He wanted to kill all of us and then kill himself. Many, many women, many, many survivors of, um, of violence will tell you that it's really easy to heal from the, the physical impacts, you know, bruises heal, broken bones heal generally, um, but it's the psychological stuff that can be the toughest uh, to recover from. And that's where really, it's really important that people can, are connected up with support services, but also have supportive friend and family and, and community members around them. My life has, has changed quite dramatically from the happy, carefree girl I was, who, um, who was looking forward to studying my Master of Art Therapy, I became, I became very quiet for a long, long time and depressed. There's nights when I'm, I'm home alone and it's quiet and I, I still worry. And there, were, there was a period of time early on where I would have, I'd have like, flashbacks and I would actually feel the hammer on my hands because I had my hands over my head when he hit me. And I used to relive that. Um, well, my first experience was when I was um, 12. Um, there was a bit of violence between my mum and dad that I remember. But um, a couple of years after that, my mum was repartnered and she was actually killed by him. So. Um, a few years after that, when I was a bit older, um, I was a victim of domestic violence for about five years myself. Well, it's a hard thing for anyone to go through, you know, trauma affects people in, yeah, difficult, like, every, it affects everyone really different and at that time in our life it was the end of our life really that's all we knew when it was taken away so speaking of my own experiences when I was a kid I dealt a lot with domestic violence um, uh, against my dad um, he used to beat me a lot and used to beat my mum a lot and my sisters um, yeah even the smallest things could tick him off and I was just a kid I didn't know I was actually doing anything wrong and Sort of instead of taking me under his wing and teaching me the ways of life, he'd just flog me. So um, I think the country rugby league and what they're doing with domestic violence and their attitude towards it is, is a really good pathway to start with. Yeah. It was 
almost one of the norm things in Redfern growing up, you know, there was always fights at the front of my home between men and a woman and it was just, you know, it was, it was a pretty normal thing for me. It wasn't until I got older and I started to realise when, you know, when it was happening inside my home as well, I could see, you know, how it was affecting my mum and, and it was a really scary time in my life. One of the things that we see um, in our programs is often that um, we don't deal necessarily very directly with how um, dad is impacting on, uh, on the kids. And if it's at the pointy end where child protection are involved, often the system focuses entirely on the mother and the mother's ability or inability to protect her children. We have to have a good, solid understanding of how the dynamics of abuse get played out and how that woman needs support in her role as a parent as well and how the children are being impacted and being harmed by it may be his continual belittling of their mum, it may be um, physical violence, it may be psychological violence, it may be all of the above. But those kids are being harmed um, and the evidence shows us that the development of children and their own life exp experience will be impacted by the presence of family violence when they're young. Look, you see a range of, um, of impacts on children. Uh, so they be may become incredibly withdrawn, they may play up, uh, you know, they may get really aggressive. Um, there's a range of different ways in which um, children, young people and adults uh, react to the violence around them. We often think, well, um, let's not shout in front of the kids, let's make sure that kids are a cushion from the impacts of this stuff. Children know what's going on. They know if they're growing up in an environment where there's power and control going on, where there's abuse of you know, one parent going on. Um, if mum's constantly being told, you know, you're stupid, being put down, um, being isolated from, from friends and family members, kids pick up on that stuff. Children and young people uh, can be incredibly resilient and it never ceases to amaze me how much um, we can learn from children and young people who have grown up in really horrifically violent um, families and communities as well. My experience of domestic violence when I was a kid um, has sort of shown me a greater appreciation for women um, and also like for myself, like just to not sort of you got to learn not to fly off the handle and just once you do something, you can't undo it. And also as well, like kids at kids, like they don't deserve anything like that. It's just wrong. Since then, I had to learn to eat, sleep, talk and walk again while I was spent seven months in the brain injury unit rehab. As a result of the acquired brain injury, I now have pain every day varying in levels. <clears throat> and I have what is called hemiplegia, so that means one side of my body with being the left is partially paralyzed. I'm lucky enough to be able to walk, but I can't use my left arm for much. It's important, really important, not to think of um, women who've experienced violence as just victims. Um, we talk a lot about victim survivors because many women who've been through, you know, horrific violence really want to emphasize the, the aspect of survival. I think what's helped me to recover is that I didn't want to be a victim. I decided I was going to take what my stepfather had done to me and turn, it, turn that around so I got the power back and use that, that energy to put that effort into helping other people. I, I think I'm in a good place and in a way it's like me having victory over what happened to me. You know, I am not what, I'm not what happened to me, I'm more than that.